Hey folks, Sean here from VisibleDark.ca. Thank you for tuning in. In this video, we are going to look at star halos, uh, specifically star halos in our narrowband data, Hubble palette images, show images, and how we can reduce the effects of these star halos and make our stars look better. Uh, we can do this in PixInsight. This is a technique that I use that I sort of came up with. I was playing around and uh, decided this worked not too bad. There is a lot of different techniques for reducing halos and uh, you can find those out there on the internet. Um, this works well for me. I like it and you might like it as well. So I thought I'd share it with you. You can give it a try. If it works great, fantastic. If you don't like it, that's okay too. You might have another way that you like uh, reducing star halos. So I wanted to share this with you because this channel is about astrophotography and image processing. And that is something that I had help with along the way and I wanted to give back. So these videos are designed to do just that, give back and help others. And I hope that uh, if you find them useful, if you find them helpful, that you'll consider subscribing. If you have subscribed already, thank you very much. And for those people that have been subscribed for, well, since the beginning of the channel, fantastic. That is super awesome and I really appreciate that. Okay, let's have a look at reducing star halos, minimizing them in PixInsight. Let's head over to the computer right now. All right, so we have PixInsight open and I've got uh, the end result showing here. On the left is the image that I didn't apply any uh, halo reduction to, and you can see the halos around the stars. And on the right is after I've applied the halo reduction technique to the image. And we can see that the halo has been reduced quite uh, quite a bit. And um, this helps make our stars look better and uh, it helps make, it, make the overall image look better too. This is something that uh, these little attention to details with our images is important because uh, they'll add up to making our overall image that much better. So, how did I end up at this point here with the reduction in the star halo? I'm going to show you that. Um, so let's get rid of this. And I'm going to show you what I did. Now, I should point out that uh, for this method of reducing the star halos, um, I used the Easy Processing Suite uh, star, Easy Star Reduction uh, tool, and that uses Adam Block's de-emphasis method for um, reducing stars. And there's a reason why I'm using a star reduction um, tool on the image to reduce the halos, and I'm going to show you that. So this is sort of a prerequisite if you want to use the same tool that I'm using, um, or if you have another technique for star reduction that you want to implement, um, you can certainly try that. I don't know how well it'll work. It might work as well. Um, but I, I'm using the uh, easy star reduction, Adam Block's de-emphasis method. Um, Adam Block's website will actually have, um, if I'm not mistaken, he has a, uh, a guide uh, which details how to do this manually if you uh, want to do it that way. Um, the easy processing suite uh, has it built in and has a tool specifically for it that does most of the heavy lifting and makes it really quick and simple. So that's why I'm using it. With that out of the way, so make sure you have the easy processing uh, script installed be, if you want to follow along with what I'm doing um, because that's going to be a, a, a prerequisite for this uh, method. So I've got my O3, S2, and H-alpha channels here. Um, we'll just uh, bring those up a bit. Okay, so I should note that I... I've already done uh, some processing of these. These are master light frames, um, and I've already done some processing to bring them to the point of doing the star uh, halo reduction. Um, so that is, I have applied dynamic background extraction to each channel, to each master. And on the H alpha, I've performed uh, deconvolution on it to regain some resolution, to bring out those details. And I've also applied noise reduction 
to all of the all of the masters um, each channel had ma uh, noise reduction applied to it and I've stretched each one individually so that brought me to this point now before I combine them in the Hubble palette format I want to point out that you can have in different channels, star bloat can be different in different channels, and that can actually lead to some of the halo problems that we see in our stars. So my method for dealing with it is to reduce the star sizes of the S2 channel in particular. In particular. Um, the O3 tends to be more bloated, but it's not as bad as the S2, but I do find the S2 channel, uh, the stars tend to be the most bloated out of all of them. And if we can tighten up those stars, reduce those stars, we can, we can still get the benefit of the S2 channel, but we're tucking the stars in behind, so to speak, the oxygen three stars and the H alpha stars. So because the S2 stars aren't as big, you're not getting the spillover that's creating that, that, um, that halo effect. Now, what I did was I applied the easy star reduction, Adam Block's technique. And what I did was I applied the easy star reduction to the S2 channel to reduce the stars and the star bloat that's occurring that is contributing to the star halos in the final image. So I'm selecting the S2 master. Next, you're gonna have to uh, click on create star mask for reduction, and it'll automatically create a star mask that will be uh, picked up and put in the raw star nut star mask uh, uh, drop down here. Um, so I'm just gonna click that and let easy Star reduction, create the star mask for us, and I'll come back when it's completed. Okay, so it created the uh, star mask for me, and it's uh, put it in the drop down tab here. And the next thing, uh, you wanna make sure that Adam Block's deemphasis method is selected, and then you simply click run easy star reduction, and it'll perform its uh, star reduction function on the S2 channel. All right, that completed, and we can uh, delete this. We don't need that anymore, and I'll just keep the uh, star reduction uh, star mask here, tuck it up, park it up here. Um, as you can see, I was uh, I already have other ones created which are no longer compatible with uh, these images here. I was uh, this is when I was uh, figuring out this method um, of star halo reduction. So we'll just park this star mask up here and we've now applied the star reduction to the S2 channel. Um, the O3 channel doesn't look that bad and the uh, H alpha channel definitely is, uh, is not bad at all. It's, it's quite good. So I'm not concerned about um, halos uh, coming from the uh, H alpha channel. And the H alpha channel already has the benefit of the deconvolution being applied, which not only uh, increases or, or reclaims, I should say, the resolution of the image, but it actually has the benefit of um, reducing the star size uh, as well a little bit too. So the S2 channel is the one that we're primarily concerned about with the star bloat and leading to the halos that we've got. Now, we're going to combine these images now, these masters. We're gonna combine them and uh, I will show you the next step in this method um, that needs to be done in order to achieve um, the end result of reducing your, your halos around your stars in your Hubble palette images. So let's go and uh, combine these and I'll just open my pixel math here for my Hubble palette combination, which is a very uh, standard one, simple, straightforward. I like that. And uh, it's the S2 channel is applied in the red. The uh, green is a mixture of H alpha and S2. 
and the blue is the uh, 03. So we'll just uh, apply that and create our image. So this image is now all three masters combined into one. So what I'll do is I'll just minimize these again, get them out of the way, and we will have a little look here at the stars and see how they look. So they don't look too bad. We've actually got a good uh, reduction in um, the halo sizes around the stars. And we can further reduce that by applying the star reduction one more time. So why don't we do that so that I can show you the difference that it makes. So we're going to go back to the Easy Processing Suite, the star reduction, and we're going to select image 45. And we are going to have to create a star mask again uh, because this is a new star field. So we want to create a new star mask. So we click that and let it create that new star mask for us. And the star mask creation uses uh, StarNet that is now part of PixInsight for creating masks, um, either uh, star masks or a starless uh, image, a starless mask. So I'll come back when the star mask creation is done. And that completed, we can delete this one here, the starless, we don't need that. And we'll just tuck this one up alongside the other star mask. And we now completed the uh, star halo reduction technique. The only other thing that you might want to consider doing, um, and this is an extra little tip, um, is if you find, if you still find that you have some magenta um, looking stars, you can actually easily fix that. And, um, and I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So just uh, take note here, we've got some magenta looking stars. The star halos have been reduced substantially, but we still have magenta looking stars, which I don't like, and um, I want to make them look more natural. So we go to process, all processes, and we go to invert, and we invert our image, and then we apply SCNR, green, the color to remove green, and SCNR can be found under noise reduction, SCNR. And all we do is apply that to the inverted image and then we can close it and then we want to go to processes and we want to invert again and bring it back and you'll notice ta-da the magenta color stars are gone and we have more natural looking stars. So let's just have a quick look at what the uh, stars would look like if we didn't um, do the star halo reduction on them. And we can easily do that by just uh, going back here to the S2 channel history. And we'll go back to the point of crop because that takes me back to my original point. And then we can, because we haven't applied any star reduction to this. These uh, S2 stars are uh, once again uh, more bloated than the other channels. So we can simply, uh, we'll just minimize that. We can combine these and um, we're going to combine uh, using the show pixel math again and we'll just click there and oops I don't want to close that. I just want to minimize it. I want to close this though. So image 51 is, image 51 has not had any star halo reduction applied. And the image 45 has had the star halo reduction applied. So let's just have a quick look and see here what we're dealing with. And as we can see, there is a, a, a nice improvement between the, uh, the original and 
the star reduction. If we look at some of these stars here, um, we can see that the halo is much larger than it is in the uh, the one, the image that we've uh, fixed the halos. And uh, these stars here all exhibit almost no halo at all. So uh, this technique, this method um, is rather effective and I like using it. Um, I think it works well. I used it on this image actually. Um, I actually uh, reprocessed this data. This was uh, Hubble palette data um, that I took using a remote telescope um, that was located in Australia at Siding Springs Observatory. And um, I reprocessed it and I had applied the, uh, I had applied this technique uh, to reduce the uh, star halos that were occurring in the image uh, just to make it look that much better. Uh, this is the uh, final image, uh, fully processed and it uh, looks great. It was really good data. It was only three hours of data as well that uh, was used to uh, complete this. So three hours each channel, um, which is incredible, but you're dealing with a remote uh, telescope located in uh, a very, uh, at a high elevation and uh, very dark skies. So um, you don't necessarily need hours and hours and hours, um, as we can see, to get uh, really great images. Okay, so that's uh, what I wanted to show you. Hopefully this is helpful to some people out there that are looking to reduce the star halos um, around the stars in their Hubble palette uh, images. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, hit the bell notification so that you're notified of new videos as I put them out. And uh, thank you again to all the current subscribers. Uh, we will see you in another video. Take care and clear skies.